I think the excitement comes from the fact that these discoveries have unfolded in the last few years. The ability to take a human stem cell uh, and really direct its fate in a petri dish, tell it to make what we want is new and exciting. And it enables us to do so many things that we couldn't do even two or three years ago. What we can do is actually make a cartilage pellet in a dish. Um, it's actually very visible. And when we put this slide on the microscope, we can actually look at the tissue from the side. The top layer, as you can see, is very smooth. All the cells are sort of lined up very nicely. So basically what we've done in a dish is recapitulate what the top of your knee looks like. And now this tissue can be used in um, models of osteoarthritis. We can test drugs on it without having to test it on people. And we're just that much closer to transplanting this into, into patients who really, really need uh, a replacement tissue. The program that April is working on in the lab is really a game changer. I think in the near future, we'll be able to take cartilage grown in the lab take it back into patients at the time of surgery and repair cartilage that's been damaged and prevent the need for joint replacement surgery. And so what we can see on the monitor now is clusters con containing human heart cells and that's why they're contracting, they're moving. And these clusters contain approximately 50% or approximately half the cells in each cluster are the beating cells and the remaining cells are very similar to the remaining cells, the other cells we have in our heart. That's cells that form blood vessels and a type of cell that helps provide structure for the heart. This was made by our colleagues in Germany. We sent them those clusters of human heart cells. They took them apart. They cast a mold with the cells. The posts are moving only because of this piece of heart tissue is pulling them together. This is the type of tissue you could imagine we're going to use for transplantation in the future. Now is really the point in time where we're going to make the transition from doing mechanical treatments, which are bypasses or stents, to doing biologic treatments, where we use the vast and really unlimited potential of a patient's own cells to help them repair the damage that's been caused by cardiovascular disease. So what we've developed here is a system where you can keep uh, the, the lung alive outside the body for an extended period of time. Now we can actually work on it and facilitate repair and regeneration of the organ. So imagine, if you will, the opportunity to take a donor lung that's injured, diagnose what's wrong with it, and repair it and create a donor lung that is better than the lung we found. We've developed this technique here, and we've translated that into clinical practice next door at Toronto General Hospital, where we are actually saving lives. I think one of the very important things that's happening here in the McEwen Centre is that Rob and Cheryl are pushing us to go the next step, not only to do exciting science, to translate into saving lives and patients, but really to look at the opportunities to protect our intellectual property and derive commercial benefit from it that we will roll back into supporting research. It's really the tip of the iceberg of regenerative medicine. The field is remarkable. I would have never guessed we'd be where we are now, four or five years ago. There's a wealth of talent in the city, there's resources and a real opportunity to, to build on something that I think is going to make a difference.